Hey guys, it's Wade here. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I would do one on my Strake and Fuel Tank build. I have the Featherlight Leading Edge Strake Kit that I bought from Nate Mullins. It, it comes out really nice when you're finished, but even though this Leading Edge Strake piece is all one unit, it is a little bit fiddly to get lined up and, and get all... Uh, you know on here just right but you can see this is the end piece right here i actually cut it short so i had to add some pieces back uh, these are the connectors for the the grand rapids magnetometers i have filled up the left tank here it has 26.5 gallons of fuel right now the aircraft is slanted just a bit so on the outboard end here the water is right at the edge but inboard there's almost three quarters of an inch left and there's about a half inch right over in here so i can squeeze at least i would think another half gallon into this tank again it's sitting at 26.5 gallons so i have at least 53 gallons total i use this bucket back here i would just go one gallon each time and then a half a gallon so I would I would increment the fuel sight gauge as I was filling it every two and a half gallons so two and a half five seven and a half ten etc so I'm pretty happy with that although I will say that the fuel sight gauge for me and I don't know if it's because of the fact that I have a wet leading edge because of the curve on this feather light streak leading edge but the fuel sight gauge caps out at 24 gallons indicated and i'll redo that just to verify again i don't know if that's because the construction of the leading edge isn't blunted like the original plans version or not now one thing that you'll probably be able to tell right off in this video is this is the bab the baffle that goes between the bl23 rib it usually dives in right about in this area right here to the fuselage well i extended that baffle and then i cut a lot more of this sidewall out to create elbow room for the back passenger it really is a lot more comfortable once you sit back there your your elbows just immediately go out into this area here it's one reason why i drove this fuel site outboard just a hair maybe an inch more than i would have normally planned to do so that when you're sitting back here you actually have some room for your elbow to sit right in this area here and then not be in the way of the fuel sight gauge but i don't really plan on looking at that fuel sight gauge with a mirror or turned around what i have in my system in my aircraft is i have these little video cameras i have one for each of the sight gauges and these feed into my Grand Rapids HXR EFIS. And so these will be positioned right up underneath the Longeron in this general area. And they'll be focused on, again, one per side for the left and the right fuel sight gauge. And those are the Atkinson fuel sight gauges, by the way. But I also have two extra or two more video cameras. And one sits on the top of the pilot headrest facing aft. It's a wide angle camera. So I can see the passenger back there in case something's going on with them. And I, and I don't have comms with them, making sure that they're okay. Also, again, it's a wide-angle camera, so I can see what's going on pretty much with the whole upper cowling, the engine, the prop. Then I also have one other camera that's on the bottom of the aircraft. It's just aft of the nose gear well. It also faces aft, and that gives me a view of my landing gear and also the bottom cowling, what's going on with the bottom side of the engine, just in case something's going on. That's an aside as far as the video cameras, but two of those four video cameras are focused directly on these fuel sight gauges. In addition to this elbow room mod right in here, like a lot of other builders do, you'll be able to see a faint outline. Once I finish the bottom of the strakes and I flip this aircraft back over upright, I'll then cut this area out and I'll put in some windows for the back seat.
passengers flying in the back of, of different uh, long easies that have that. I can tell you that it's, it's a really nice feature to have. Also on these fuel sight gauges, I installed them what I would say upside down because the leads for this LED light that are inside of these fuel sight gauges are uh, on the actual top side. And in this bundle of wires right here, one, some of it for the camera, but there's also a hot and, and uh, uh, a power and a negative for the this little LED light here on the fuel sight gauge in case I'm flying at night. So again, 26 and a half gallons. I, I did put a little bit of uh, soap in the water just so that it would reduce the surface tension. Sorry for the lights. But uh, again, I used that bucket right there, did it one gallon at a time, uh, and then a half a gallon, so I'd do every two and a half gallons. But I'm really happy. I did also, as you can see right off, I did the T-hat the method on the top of the ribs and the baffles. So once I flip this bird back over, I will uh, close it out with the top skins. There's one right over there that actually goes to this side. And one reason why I'm not closing out, actually two reasons I should say that I'm not closing out the, the top skin before I flip the bird and glass the bottom of this strake, the bottom strake skin, is because I do want to have access to get in here nice and easy to get this window. Uh, also, this hole right here, actually this is the feeding hole for a conduit that will, an air conduit, that will start right here with a hole on the leading edge and it'll go into a ram air expansion uh, intake and then that'll feed into some conduit that will go over into this hole that will feed the entire uh, ventilation system for the aircraft and that goes into a heat exchanger with hot oil coming from the engine so that during the winter months and the cold months you can actually have heat inside this aircraft. So I expect that to work fairly well. So all that is going to be done after I flip the bird back upright. And then the final thing before I put the top skin on is I'm going to paint this whole area. So that will be all finished when I put the top skin on and I don't have to try to get in here at weird angles with the the paint can which sometimes doesn't work out so well so that's pretty much it again now this is 26 and a half gallons of water water is about 8.3 pounds per gallon compared to 100 low lead which is about six gallon uh, six pounds per gallon so there's literally 60 extra pounds inside of this fuel tank right now and there's no leaks and I haven't even skinned the bottom yet so let me reposition this camera just to here if I can without. and then I'll show you so here's a drain plug for checking your fuel during pre-flight make sure there's no water in there those came out pretty nice and I the one thing I do like about the positioning on those with these feather light bleeding edge strakes is it I think it tends to get them back just a hair so they're not you know right up front here I do like that so they're kind of underneath but that's it just wanted to give you an overview of my strake build show you what was going on when I finish the aft nose cover which I should be done here within the next week hopefully the next few days I'll do a video on that as well so I'm gonna drain this left tank and then I'm going to fill up the right tank. I'm going to check for leaks. One thing I wanted to point out with this elbow room mod is again normally this baffle goes from here to right about in here and as you can tell that's quite an area volume of fuel that is lost. So to reclaim that what I did was I took what is normally the OD rib, this guy right here, and it normally goes from about right here and dives into this R45 rib right here, the BL45. 
But what I did was I straightened out the OD rib. I put in another baffle, which is actually from this area right here, is the aft wall of the fuel tank for this compartment right in this general area. And then there's a, a little bit of a side wall from the original R45 rib. So I have this extra added compartment. Now one thing by putting the fuel, the aft fuel wall right here is that it pretty much kept this fuel right here, although it is outboard, it kept it right about in that general area of the center of gravity. So I expect it to have minimal effect on my aft CG. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then again, what that did was instead of only getting about 24 gallons missing some of that fuel from doing and from this angle you can see it's kind of a severe angle going back to create that elbow room mod for the back seater which it is it really it does add immensely to the comfort back in that back seat area you're not nearly as scrunched but it, it did let me reclaim that fuel and then I'm I'm fairly certain that because I have a wet leading edge that probably gave me maybe close to a gallon as well. So I do expect to have total about 27 gallons maybe a hair over per side which is going to give me again about 54 total gallons a hair over uh, if I want to go full fuel. So that's it. Again thanks for watching. Cheers.